tinfoil hat. Oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed. And a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to Tinfoil Hat. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. There's you just blew my mind. Are you ready to get your mind blown? Good morning, Swarm, and welcome to Tinfoil Hat. You know I am. You know I'm here to do. I'm here to Rock. Join me as always, Xavier Guerrero, and then the ones and twos, Juicy Johnny, Jay Nice, Johnny Woodard. How are you guys? Uh, you know, I, I'm not sure. I, I mean, I could say We're, I'm good uh, or I'm bad. Let me, I... let me use my words very, very <laughs> specifically. Interesting episode. I'm going to tell you guys. It's an interesting episode. Yes. It is a... Or no. I mean, you know, it depends on... Or it could be a not interesting episode. (laughs) I find it to be interesting. And Johnny, kind of get into what you were talking about. We we had uh, a doctor on and Dr. Colin Ross... And very smart man, v- uh, a really smart guy, yeah. uh, and he came in to talk to us about satanic ritual abuse. But his take is very interesting, Johnny. What do you think? I would say, uh, he, should we say anything? He, well, we we should I think give we people should. a little heads up here. Yes, he's agnostic about it, and it, I think what's going on here is you've got somebody who has a doctorate. They've been in academia. <laughs> but he's like a, a literal big, doctor, yeah, not literal. like... Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, exactly. I mean, yeah. but I mean, like... He's, he's a practicing uh, therapist. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's written books. I mean, but he's he is an academic. And those <laughs> kinds of people are, you know, simply by virtue of having been in schools for a good chunk of their lives, uh, very noncommittal when it comes to things they can't prove for certain. Right. Beyond any doubt. And... That's what that's what we're kind of grappling with in this episode when we try to pin him down a few times on these issues. It's interesting. I don't want to give too much away, but we gave him a run for his money. Well, no, no, but uh, I tell you, when he does, when he does come in with things that he agrees on, that adds a little oomph to it because no, I mean, like you know, he's playing straight. Well, well you'll listen. Like he believes a lot of stuff that we believe in. There's just a little disconnect, right? There's just a uh, academic disconnect. Yeah, which is okay. And guys, so I could easily 15 minutes in this thing going, I don't know what this about. Let's say, but it's I, belief versus no. You know what I mean? And he he belief wants to versus know things. Actual evidence, right? Well, and not even evidence because he he conceded there is evidence of many of these things, but. Evidence is not proof, you know. It's proof versus versus belief. Yeah, and belief is not the. He doesn't do belief. Yeah, Johnny. I, I use the word believe a lot, and and Johnny kind of thinks that the guy I'm, up. Yeah. I, we're very thankful for. Him no, he's coming great. On. No, don't get me wrong. And I want to say something, man. Just I could again easily be like, I'm not put, putting this out because it doesn't fit the narrative that maybe we feel is is fits the show. And I think that's a horrible way to operate. Yeah. I don't think that is a, I, I think if I did that, I couldn't I couldn't be okay with myself. And and if you guys found that out, I think you guys would be well, I mean, that's disingenuous, right? Because you're only putting out stuff that that fits your narrative and I don't like that. I want this show to be all sides and all discussions. I think it does fit the narrative, by the way. I, because because I, he is into yeah. a lot more stuff than we believed. Yeah, totally. And the idea that someone with his kind of experience as an academic and in treating people who have you know been abused or, or at least think they have, according to him, uh, has come this far on this, you know, I yeah. mean, there's a time when people uh, like this wouldn't even like the Epstein thing wouldn't even dabble in that. Yeah, so I, I think that's, that's I'm with Johnny. When the episode started, I was like, oh, he's not going to be he's just going to. Tell us we're wrong, we're completely right. No, but then we threw in the Epstein stuff, and he kind of was like, okay, you guys have a little bit there. But he said he was just not connecting the dots. Well, he wasn't even saying we don't have it. He was saying that he doesn't know. And I'm okay with that. Yeah. I'm okay. I think think we could deal with some more uncertainty. I think you guys will find it interesting. You know, I mean, it took, it basically took 
Xavier Guerrero asking the right questions yeah. to get us back on track. So it is a it is a roller coaster of emotions. This show, uh, I enjoyed it. Uh, I I feel like there was I, that there was moments in the show I thought was going to be another Nick Pope episode, but both the guys on the show, even though Johnny wasn't there. D- d- don't feel like that was it, and I don't feel like it was it. And you know my opinions on Nick Pope's episode. Nothing against Nick Pope personally, but I, I find it to be one of our uh, weirder episodes. So, th- and that's a show that's pretty weird. So I just wanted to throw that out. If you want to hear that? That's uh, Tim Hat One Seven Three, the curious case of Nick Pope. Go yes. <laughs> so. Uh, check that out. Guys, if you want to see me live, I'm going to be in uh, Jacksonville, Mississippi, June 2nd, and then uh, Baton Rouge, uh, June 3rd. We just added, I believe the date is a comedy cast. One show, guys, this time. Uh, and that is, yes, June 13th, and then June, okay, so uh, before that, June 8th, 9th, 10th, I'm in San Diego at the uh, at the American Comedy Company. Just know, guys, that I am putting dates t- together. Excuse me, guys. I'm putting dates together, and that's moving. So, and then, uh, so go t- get your tickets, and then just go to samtribly.com. We have all of my t shirts. You can grab t shirts there for the show, all of our premium content. If you want to support the show, t shirts, great way to support the show. Uh, subscribing to uh, my numerous. Uh, sp- uh, premium contents, whether it's Rockfin, $15 for 400 shows. You get 400 shows, co- 400 content creators for $15, okay? Amazing. That should cost you at least $500. I, 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 dude, I mean, a lot of people are upset because they raised the price a little bit. It's still cheap. It's still cheap, okay? And then we also have uh, Cash Daddies where we are, we are, we work with a wonderful a uh, guy named Howie Dewey, uh, the patreon.com slash cash daddies cash. And uh, he gives daily picks and he's nailing it. T-shirts at Tim fall at t-shirts.com. All of our, all of our um, affiliate programs, whether it's buy gold and silver, aqua, aqua teen hunger force, aqua cure, hydrogen gla- gas, and Harley Ray crystals. All of that. You'll hear more about at the end of the show. We have a nuked dot social that's uh, our Telegram. You can do only conspiracies, and then uh, the Zero, which is my spiritual podcast, and then all of these free shows, audio. We're talking uh, hours and hours and hours every week of uh, that we put out here. Plus, we don't smoke the same, and they got some wonderful stuff going on there. Anything else, guys? Uh, check out the new Broken Simulation. It would have just come out. It's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Real quick, guys. And I'm going to put some links on the website. Go find on Instagram, if you can, go to Sam Tripoli Comedy. Follow me there. It's my clips, stand-up clips only Instagram. I'm seeing if I could uh, play with the algorithm. Join me there. Help me out. If you listen and you're on Instagram, please just follow me, Sam Tripoli Comedy. Oh, and I should say, we are on uh, Broken Simulation. We are taking uh, (laughs) Urban Legends. We've been getting a bunch from around the country. If you want to call us there, it's 657-339-1338. 657-339-1338. Leave a voicemail. Keep it short, please, under three minutes. Yes, and one more and thing. We'll we don't smoke the same. We're looking for uh, to expand the crew. So if you're a video editor, uh, someone to make reels, Instagram content creator, uh, DM us where it's a paid con- It's a paid gig, so hit us up. What's your Instagram? Uh, we don't smoke the same or actually marks the spot. Okay. All right, guys. Go check it out. I uh, hope you enjoy this very interesting Conversation with Dr. Colin Ross. Enjoy it. We go deep, homeboy. Aaron, open your mind. Drink. Okay, let's get into it. I'm very excited to talk to this guest. He is an author. He is a podcaster. He has his books called, his book, he's got a bunch of books. One's called Satanic Ritual Abuse. Principle of Treatment, published by the University of Toronto. Uh, very honored to have him on. Please welcome Dr. Colin Ross. How are you, doctor? I'm good, thanks. You? Uh, we're doing great. Uh, do you live in Toronto? Uh, no, I have two children who live in Toronto. I'm in the Austin area. Oh, you're down here. Uh, yeah, man. Uh, I was just in uh, Toronto. I love that city. It was a lot of fun. Happy people up there. So, Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. We really do appreciate it. Um, real quick, uh, for those who may not be familiar with you, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and where they can find you? 
Sure. So I'm Colin Ross, a psychiatrist, uh, born in Canada, grew up there, did medical school in Edmonton in Canada, um, then psychiatry in Winnipeg. Winnipeg's where I kind of grew up. And then in 91, I moved to Texas, uh, where I was working at a hospital called Charter Hospital. That whole hospital system closed. Then I was working at a place called Timberlawn. That hospital closed. I moved to uh, another hospital in the Dallas area. And I had hospital trauma programs in Michigan and L.A. for about 20 years. So all of that stopped. Um it kind of wound down over the last couple of years, officially stopped last year. And now I have uh, outpatient programs in the Dallas area and the Austin area. Okay. Well, well, <laughs> do you have a website? Do you have a website, a Twitter, an Instagram, or wherever we can send our, our uh, listeners to? So I have uh, multiple websites, but the main one is Ross Inst, R-O-S-S-I-N-S t.com which is the ross institute and then trauma recovery inst.com which is the trauma recovery institute which is my treatment uh center that's in both austin and the dallas area okay and so just on, search so. all in a ross md it's, stuff will come up okay all the links are below uh so we'll make sure to uh that you all um, can have those because uh, there's a lot of different places to go to and uh, it's going to be great. It's, I'm very excited about this conversation. So satanic ritual abuse. Um, you know, I'm 50. I've uh, been through a lot. I've seen this kind of uh, journey uh, from satanic panic. We had like, you know, the metal of the 70s and 80s and introduction to more blatant, uh, satanic images and satanic panic and then that seemed to go away for a while now we're back into this thing where hollywood the record industry excuse me or music industry is really really seems to be pushing us to the forefront where does your journey begin into the investigation of satanic ritual abuse uh so i was i finished my psychiatry training in 85 in winnipeg and then I was a hospital-based psychiatrist, uh, associate professor at the University of Manitoba until 91. And that's when I started seeing people with multiple personality and really got into that as a subspecialty area. And in the course of those six years, I never saw anybody with full-on satanic ritual abuse story where it's a well-organized multi-generational cult they have meetings, child sacrifice, pentagrams, candles, altars, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so when I arrived in uh, the hospital, now we're November 91, within the first couple of months, I started to hear stories of, yeah, I grew up in a satanic cult and all the sacrifices were done and uh, people were bred on purpose to create babies that were not registered, that were sacrificed. My dad was a high priest, and sometimes uh, there was kind of a military angle on it, which is uh, my dad either you know, got in trouble himself and got bribed because of child sexual abuse, pornography, whatever he was doing. And then the military took me over, and I was on a base, and I was at special training sessions as a kid and so on. Whoa. So there's some overlap. <laughs> So none of this is like proven, verified, objective evidence. But this is what I started to hear. And then I thought, at the same time I started to hear about, I was in a, some sort of military CIA mind control program as a kid where the following list of things were done to me for the purpose of creating an altered personality or one or more that then could be used for various missions and assignments and so on. So I started hearing both these kind of stories within months of arriving in Texas. And so my first reaction was, what the heck? I don't, I don't know what this is all about. I've never heard of this. There's no publications on it in the mainstream literature. I don't know if it's real or not real. No idea kind of what the treatment would be. And so I started to look into both in terms of reading and um, 
you know, researching the literature, which were now pre-internet, so it's all hand searching. So on satanic ritual abuse, there's just a few books, mostly kind of Christian, uh, we're scared of the Satanist type stuff. Zero professional literature, zero papers published in journals, <laughs> zero guidance on, okay, somebody tells you the story, now what? Um, and then <clears throat> the more I looked into it, it was just like searching for people in the fog. I never really could find any solid information anywhere. Nobody had any you know, court-level objective convicting the Satanist kind of evidence. So sort of parallel track, I was looking into CIA military mind control. Completely different experience. The more I looked into it, which is reading books, uh, one or two papers scattered around the literature. But I would uh, read a book, find out about somebody who published on that topic, go to the library, get that reference, look at the references for that reference. Try, so I was manually tracking all this stuff pre-internet. <clears throat> and then I ended up going down to a, a CIA reading room in the Washington area. <clears throat> and they brought in a, a trolley with the 149 MK Ultra subproject files in it. And I read through all of those, and then I ordered a bunch of them. <laughs> it's kind of science fiction sounding, but uh, this is, then I was able to document a whole you know, history of CIA military mind control oh. that's objective, that's, you know, there's documents, the CIA admits to it. And there's some other books written about that before that. So, and so on, on the one journey, no objective evidence. On the other journey, the more I looked into it, the more objective evidence in a giant pile, um, including experimentation within MKUltra and related subprojects that had quite a few of the components of the stories that people were telling me. And so then this led to two books I published in 95 and then 2000, one on satanic ritual abuse, one on CIA military mind control. So that's basically how I got into it, hearing stories from patients and then investigating. Damn, dude. That's crazy. So what I'm led to believe is that you believe that there is there is something going on and that they're more willing to say it's a CIA MK Ultra program than a satanic ritual? Or do you or or is your position that there's no satanic rituals, they're actually just CIA um <coughs> CIA MK Ultra events? Uh, kind of neither. Interesting. So the CIA, so M. Character is just one of a whole set of sub projects. Those objectively exist, um, but there's no like weird rituals in the public documents. Right. Uh, so that's CIA military mind control. Uh, in terms of satanic ritual abuse, there's all the descriptions of all the ceremonies, but there's no documentation that any of that took place. So. Basically, my, the position I take is called therapeutic neutrality. <clears throat> so now remember, I'm now talking as a psychiatrist therapist. People come, they tell these stories. What's my position on it? And my position is, I don't believe it, and I don't not believe it. Right? So I can't prove it's real. It'd be handy if somebody could prove it was real, at least some of it. And I can't prove that it's not real because... First of all, I don't have a whole squad of detectives working for me. But how am I going to prove that something 30 years ago never happened, right? That happened in secret, that was illegal, that was covered up. So it's just a fact that I don't know for a fact that it is real. And I don't know for a fact that it's not real. So like proceeding in therapy, I'll give you some examples, but proceeding in therapy that leads to like a whole stance that I take and it leads to, okay, here's the strategies, here's the tasks, here's the interventions. So the, when the satanic panic wave hit in the nineties, the false memory syndrome foundation was formed yeah. and they were attacking and discrediting, attacking, discrediting 
multiple personality disorder, and there's never been any satanic ritual abuse at all was their position. And then the therapy community was kind of on the defensive and going, oh, yeah, no, it's real, it's real, it's real, it's real. And it became a war about, is it real or not real? Do you believe or not believe? With that whole uh, controversy, war, quotes, debate, wasn't really a debate. It was just a shouting match and sort of verbal drive-by shootings. <laughs> it was completely irrelevant to what to do clinically. All right, guys, real quick, I want to tell you about our good friend, James McMahon at Copy My Crypto. Let me tell you about Copy My Crypto. Listen, everybody, we've seen so many people making ridiculous money in crypto, but did you know it's easy for you to do the same? The Copy My Crypto membership sh site shows you the coins that YouTuber James McMahon personally holds and allows you to copy him, okay? It's like having a big brother who knows what he's doing. You don't need to know anything about crypto or how to invest. You simply do what he does. So let me tell you about James. He runs Crypto with James YouTube channel, which despite heavy censorship, has over 26,000 subscribers. Since 2020, he's told his viewers to buy 26 crypto coins. Had you put in 100 bucks into each one, it went on to be worth $120,000. Of the 26 coins, his top pick of the year, a coin called Phantom, went up 692 times from what when he said. The, that one call... Retired a number of people, including guys in their 20s and 30s. Remember, this is all public knowledge. You can go to YouTube and verify for yourself. So if you, you'd like to join the 2,800 members who copy James, then stop what you're doing right now and head over to copymycrypto.com slash TFH. That's copymycrypto.com slash TFH. TFH. That's TFH. You'll not only find proof of everything I've said, but my listeners gain full access for just one dollar. Once again, that's copymycrypto.com slash TFH. The recession is here, guys. You can suffer like everyone else or choose to thrive. James is a real deal. Go visit his site now. When you have a group of people coming in or you're you're interviewing inpatients who are in these hospitals and they're talking about all this stuff going on. Is there a common theme throughout there? Did you ever get the same story from multiple people that made you think that it is possible that what they're saying is true? Uh, yeah. And just in general, there's nothing about it that to me seems implausible or impossible. If you think, okay, shortly before I was born was the end of the Second World War. And my dad fought in the Second World War. And the Nazis obviously had a lot of pagan kind of white supremacy style beliefs. They were very organized. They had uniforms. They got together and they ritually, well, you might not call it ritually, but they sure sacrificed 6 million people. So human beings in a very organized fashion, getting together, having a belief system, wearing costumes, and murdering people in a very gory, you know, sadistic kind of way. Welcome to human history, right? Yeah, it is kind of crazy. Are there any um, of your cases that stood out to you? Um, there's not one that stood out in the sense that I got some evidence uh, or one was, there's some that stood out in both directions. Uh, we wow. did have one case in the 90s, 90, probably four or five-ish in there somewhere. Uh, whole ritual abuse history. She was a breeder for the cult. Uh, uh, three or four or five babies were killed in sacrifices. Whoa. None of them registered. Um, a complex system of personalities inside with you know, different ways of keeping secrets from one part of the mind so the other part of the mind didn't know. All kinds of feelings and PTSD that go along with that. And then she had to uh, be seen by a gynecologist because she was having some symptoms. 
And the gynecologist said, well, yeah, she has an intact hymen and she's never been pregnant. Wait, wait, none, what? Of, none of it happened. None of it at all. But it was very complex. If you're willing to believe it, very plausible, all the feelings, it was consistent. And then on the other end of the spectrum is people who not trying to get any you know, advantage or extra treatment or get out of legal problems or being manipulative or being theatrical. And they're just telling their trauma story and working on it. So the, there's not just kind of like one profile that fits everybody. There's a, on the opposite end of the spectrum, not my personal experience, but like the example of, okay, let's say you and I are ardent false memory type people. Well, here's a story that's obviously not true. And any idiot can see it's not true. The woman says, well, <clears throat> I was a, a research assistant at the University of Minnesota. And my employer, my supervisor, who was a professor at the University of Minnesota, dosed me with LSD and put me in a room entirely lined with leaves that was on the campus of the University of Minnesota. And she comes to the ER and she tells this story. Okay, come on, like, there's no professor at the University of Minnesota dosing people with LSD and putting them in a room that's all lined with leaves on campus. Impossible, false, ridiculous, right? But the, uh, the professor was Amadeo Marazzi, who was previously the head of chemical warfare at Edgewood Arsenal. He was funded by the Office of Scientific Research to do LSD experiments. And in one of his publications that I have a copy of, there's a research subject sitting in the Ames leaf room that he had constructed that was on campus, which is basically made out of two by fours and plywood. And you see the research subject is sitting just inside the room, which is open at the near end, closed at the far end, and it's totally lined with leaves. And this Dr. Ames developed that on contract to the Office of Naval Research. And this guy who's the research subject, he's wearing special goggles that have anisoconic lenses that make all the perspectives be out of whack. And he's high on LSD. And he's adjusting a bar at the far end of the room to make it look horizontal because he's got two knobs he can control. And the bar is like this. This is all objective reality. This really happened to this woman, totally objectively for real. And by the way, the astounding conclusion from this research was if you are high on LSD and wearing anisoconic lenses, you can't see straight. <laughs> Well, they really broke ground there, huh? Right. Wow. It's so interesting. But so then that's a crazy, obviously impossible false memory that's totally objectively real, which just takes me back to my conclusion. You never know for sure either way. You can think you know for sure. You can have lots of attitudes. You can trash talk people with the opposite set of beliefs. But really, nobody knows for sure, for sure. I don't think that everything that was reported at the height of the satanic Panic was all objectively real. I doubt that zero was was real. Are there some? Are there? Could, could you go into specifics there? What, what are some? What are some of the things that we, you know, that I'm sure we've talked about here during the satanic panic that you think were particularly likely to be, uh, you know, uh, either false memories or uh, ginned up nonsense? And and what would you? What would you? What are you inclined to lend credence to? Well, it's all the same stuff. Uh, it's not like there's some. Well, bits I, mean, of it. I mean, are there specific events that you recall that that, or, or are you are you taking the same approach, like sort of uh, agnostic to to all of them? Yeah, because for a fact, I don't know that it's real or not real. Right. I can have all my personal opinions, but the the so slightly changing the topic. So I we'd get love to hear your opinions, by the way. That, uh, we, this yeah. is a very lighthearted show. We, I yeah, mean, if yeah. you want to dive into yeah. opinions, yeah. So we'd love yeah, to hear like what well, I mean, like I would love to know, like, like if if uh, anything that you got where you're like, okay, I investigate this. This didn't turn. This didn't make sense. But then I investigate this, and this did make sense because what I'm trying to understand is. Uh, is it the is it your take uh, that most of this is just not even real? My take is I don't know. 
It's it's, a, I, my take is I really don't think 100% is real. And I really don't think 0% is real. And that's the best I can say. Like the Son of Sam, there's so, some of that's real, right? The Son of Sam is... I mean, there has to be an element of something that will kick this off to get it going. Or well, the false people will say it's all just <clears throat> hysteria and urban legends and contamination from stories people have made up. And they'll go to, you know, this book kicked off the satanic panic or that book. Yeah, maybe. Did, did you ever find a case at all where any of it was real? Well, that's not exactly the right question. What is the right I, question? The right question is, did I find a case where I had proof that it was real? What would, what would, what I would, would I would, not, I would lower the threshold. I would say, uh, did you find a case that convinced you it was real? Let's not say, let's not even call it proof, but that you were convinced more likely than not that, that it was real. And what not, were those? Not really, because it's all kind of the same stuff all the time. It's not like there's the, Oh, there's this group of stories, they don't seem believable. And there's that group of stories, they do seem believable. It was all the same thing. You know, I grew up in an abusive family. There was incest, physical, emotional, sexual abuse inside the family. Probably my uncles and my cousins were involved. Nothing ritual. Mm -hmm. uh, and then my dad, with or without my mom's knowledge, would transport me by car deep into the woods and I might be drugged beforehand and then all this ritual stuff would happen and then I was brought back home. If that was and the rituals included exactly what you would expect. There's sometimes it's just a bunch of people, sometimes it's 13 people in either black or purple robes in a circle huh. chanting. There's an altar uh child is sacrificed on the altar, et cetera, et cetera. It was basically the same scenario with some variations. All are the, time. the primary sources for these usually children or are they, are they adults that are remembering things that happened to them as children? So I'm an adult psychiatrist. So it's all adults. It's all me. adults. Okay. Now, does that, would you, would you be more inclined to believe it from a children just on its face from a child? Sorry. On, on, on the face. If it came from a child who was less likely to have been influenced by culture and books, et cetera. Well, the problem there is, so again, the false memory people, they're going to say, oh, kids are suggestible. Mom must have told them. They must have seen it on TV. They picked it up from somewhere, even if they can't identify where it was that it was picked up from. Okay. What's your take so, on the West Memphis, West Memphis 3, that case? Okay, so that's a case. So there is objective evidence of what's called dabblers that is so but we're talking about these organized multi-generational secret cults that yeah advise children there's no objective you, know, you could get a conviction level of evidence that i've ever seen but there are uh there's murder scenes where uh, somebody's got like satanic uh, symbols carved on their body there's teenagers who get together there's a satanic element to it and they either abuse each other or kill somebody. That happens for sure. And, you know, there's people who identify themselves as Satanists who uh, get together and do not sure exactly what, but not that kind of, you know, criminal human sacrifice stuff. Uh, so there's, there's Satanism that's involved in drugs involved in group sex it's kind of kinky maybe there's pornography that probably exists but what would have to constitute for you to believe there's evidence of it like what would that be if i said hey the, uh this over here they're doing sacrifices over here how would you investigate that well, I wouldn't personally investigate it, obviously, but it's just all standard police stuff and standard court evidence. If you find a videotape, well, that's that's pretty conclusive. Okay. If you find a body, you know, where the heart's been cut out and there's a pentagram on the floor and there's blood all over the place and there's candles and there's paraphernalia and 
So obviously something happened there. If you've got a perpetrator confession, if you've got two, three eyewitnesses are all telling the same story, who are credible adults. It's just the same kind of investigation that any law enforcement would do, any prosecutor, any private detective. There's nothing different about it. So so we just had a case in Utah where the sheriff is coming out and saying that there is satanic uh, ceremonies being done. Would that, would that constitute something for you? Does it have to be a conviction for you to go, okay, that was a real story? Or if law enforcement goes, hey, this is real, but then but the case doesn't end up going anywhere. Right. Well, then it's just an allegation, right? Right. So you need a conviction. Well, it's not that I need a conviction. To know for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, you got to have some kind of objective evidence. It's no difference from, you know, the the sheriff says there was a bank robbery. Okay, well, I doubt if the sheriff's going to lie about a bank robbery happening, but then I go, okay, where, when, what's your evidence? Do you okay. have any video? Do you have a confession? It's exactly the same thing. And people get like either hysterically believing or violently skeptical when the police saw, when the sheriff says that. But really, they don't react like that when the sheriff says there was a a break-in or a car theft or a mugging. Because nice. you generally assume that the police have got some kind of evidence before they say that, right? Right. Yeah. So, but then, so what is the evidence? What? Why keep it all secret? Let's uh, hear it. I'm with you on that. So, so would they have to be convicted of, let's say, um, a, is there a crime called Satan, Satan worshiping? No, no, no. That's a freedom of religion issue. The yeah. crime would be child sexual abuse or murder. Okay. Do you believe that? child sexual abuse and murder happens? Yeah, obviously. Okay. So, so has there been a case where you saw that the prosecution introduced satanic worshiping as a reason and then it got, got a conviction? Not, not this kind of high level multi-generational Alt conviction. I've never heard of one. Okay. If, what would you call Nexium? What would you call that? Yeah. Uh, I, well, first of all, I don't know that story thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly. But I mean, he got convicted. Yeah. There's lots of people testifying. You can see the brands on them. Uh, the movie star woman or TV star woman, whose name I forget, first. she didn't deny that all that happened. Are, are, right. Well, I guess my question is, uh, are there commonalities in a case like that where you see like ritual cult abuse and, and the, the th kinds of things that you've uh, investigated? Well, there's commonalities at the level of um, not actually the activity itself. Because in Nexium, I didn't hear any evidence that there was Satanism involved or, you know, all the symbols. And but all the it, but there, there are quite a few rituals that seemed involved in, in a lot of what they so do. organized ritual abuse that's a separate question uh, okay so there was some sort of organized ritualistic abuse in the nexium cult for i mean according to the conviction right it's not really disputed but that doesn't make it satanic right okay so organized ritualized uh, sexual abuse of children i mean that's a billion dollar industry multi billion dollar industry every day child pornography, sex trafficking. You know, we think that uh, the sex traffickers around the world, the cartels, they wouldn't stoop to any satanic ritual abuse. Doesn't make sense. Yeah, right? Doesn't make sense at all. I, I'm curious now, I see that you have, some of your assertions are based on historical evidence. What are What's some of the historical evidence you rely on when you say that it's plausible that this is, happening now it's as likely as not at least that it's happening now well you mentioned the nazis i'm curious if there are some other examples welcome to human history right genocide all over the place going back for thousands of years 
in if you read about medieval torture and you look at all these torture implements, mm -hmm. that's a pretty crazy, organized, sadistic, violent killing of human beings and cutting them open and stretching them and et cetera, et cetera. So my point being crazy, organized, you know, way off the charts, sadistic murder by human beings is all over the place in human history. That's not debatable. So therefore, it, the style gets debated and not believed in. But if we forget the style and the satanic trappings, that's happened all over the place for thousands of years. Do you believe in Satan worshiping? Well, that's not a, a personal belief question either, because uh, there are several satanic organizations that say that you know, we're Satanists. But they don't say, oh, and we sacrifice children and commit all these crimes. They'll say, you know, we have get-togethers and we wear costumes, but we don't do anything criminal. So, is so, that so at that level, Satanism is, again, just an objective fact. Hey, guys, real quick, I want to tell you about our friend Jay Dyer, and he's doing a big show with Jamie Kennedy and Jamie Henshaw. It's a philosophy and comedy show. It's July 6th in los angeles okay they're touring the country and they're making a stop in la and it is july 6th you can go to eventbrite i'm sure you can go to jdyer.com check it out but hey man grab your tickets now it's a comedy philosophy stand up q a all the fun just go check it out now okay so so it has to be like so so is it uh, your belief that there's been never been any documentation that generational uh, families have been committing crimes uh, e like such as, let's say, uh, the Queen Elizabeth, right? She gets convicted in a court uh, in the disappearance of, of native... Native Canadian children, 10 Native Canadian children. Then her son is associated with a radio disc jockey that is very famous in, in Britain for pedophilia. Is that something? A lot, is, it that, is it that they have to be like, we're doing it in the name of Satan that is the, is the, 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 the point in which you are trying to f find evidence in? Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. So groups of people getting together and doing all kinds of crazy, gory, sexual, murder, ritualized stuff. There's no doubt that takes place. And people in power covering up and hiding stuff that's been going on for centuries. Welcome to all the exposure of child sexual abuse in the Catholic Church and covering it up and transferring the priest to another diocese and so on. There's I mean, no doubt all that stuff goes on. I mean, but and, in Jeffrey Epstein's island, I mean, the temple alone looks pretty pretty ritual where it's like they're doing something there. It's not just like even if they are sex trafficking, there's more to it than just that. Well, I agree with that totally. You know, so can I, but we're back to the evidence, right? So what is the evidence that we have? Well, we know nobody disputes that Jeffrey Epstein was – trafficking underage children to powerful political and business people and wealthy people. And he was flying all kinds of people to little St. James Island, AKA Orgy Island in his airplane. All that's publicly known. And he was convicted for child sex trafficking and so on. Um, so that we know for sure. What else do we know for sure? Uh, did he kill himself or did he get murdered? We don't know the for sure, for sure on that. I would say either perfectly possible. But what we do know is that building. So you just go online and look at little St. James Island and pretty high quality photographs of this building, which is clearly not just a random architectural design. It's got these blue and white stripes and various designs to it. So if you can pull up the one where you can see, uh, that's a, yeah, it, you don't get a much better view than that, but there's these two gold statues on top. Yes. 
which when you can get some pictures that show them more closely, there's some sort of Egyptian, you know, figures. It's either, uh, yeah, even there you can't quite see for sure, but, and then they got supposedly blown over in a hurricane and disappeared. Yeah. But if you look at that building, there's other buildings in the Middle East that have more or less the same design with those blue and white stripes and so on. So number one, that's not just a random design that somebody thought, oh, I'll do blue and white stripes. Um, why is there those weirdo Egyptian gold things on the roof? Eh, it could just be he likes that kind of architecture. I don't think so. And then there's beds inside there. And part of the public disinformation was, oh, um, that was just used for music lessons. Okay, does that look like a building that's just for music lessons? And why do you have cots and beds in a building that's only for music lessons? Also, when you look at aerial photos of his ranch in New Mexico, there's a stone spiral on the ground there. So, yeah, that thing, not exactly a spiral. I'm not sure what you would call that geometrically. But again, that's not just... You know, a couple of guys thought they'd have a garden like that. That's not random. That's got some sort of symbolic, pagan, ritual, some some kind of background to it. And so that's what we know for a fact. Okay. So I, I'm starting to understand what you're saying here in, in a way. So so what? Uh, many times on the show, Doctor, we have talked about how I honestly believe that the 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 actual religion or philosophy of of satanism okay is a kind of nerd dork thing started by and we 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 just had a show on it that a lot of the people behind the initial thrust of satanism in america were a bunch of limited hangout. A lot of them had intelligence uh, connections to kind of create this boogeyman that went out there, right? So, so we know that we well, we on the show have had multiple guests come on and talk that we back when this show first started, we had Lucius Grave or whatever his name is, who is the guy? What's that? Lucian Greaves. Lucian Greaves, who's trying to go around and put. Uh, you know, bath mitt statues he, in front he of also attacks me and other people who treat dissociative disorders. Oh, why, yes. uh, wait, on what, on what grounds? How does, why would he attack you? Uh, because it's stupid and it's all false memories. It's just the same false memory platform, and you know, it's creating all kinds of havoc and it's not real. And these crazy multiple personality now called dissociative identity disorder therapists. If you can believe it, they believe that there's satanic cults around. So <laughs> you can't really make this stuff up, right? So I personally and we, the organization called the International Society for the Study of Multiple Personality and Dissociation, it's just, it's like the Depression Association or the Anxiety Association. It's just the association for these disorders. We're being attacked by the satanic temple for believing in Satanism. That's amazing. <laughs> well, because well, I've had Lucius back in the day was on the show, and it was very it was very funny because we go, hey, man, this has been when we would have the guests hang out during the intro. Yeah. yeah. Right. And, we're, and it was me and Off the Grid Ryan. Now, Off the Grid Ryan, like I said before, is going through his – you know, Michael Douglas falling down face where he hates society and all that stuff. Uh, but back in the day, I will be honest with you, the show had a darker tone to it because of who he liked the book. Now, I, uh, mostly off of Lucia's grave, there was a couple other people that were a little darker than if today Sam would have liked. And Lucia's right. graves is one of those people and the reason I bring it up, because when I go, okay, welcome to Tim Fall. Hey, he goes, what's the name of the show? I go, Tim Fall. Hey, he goes, are you those conspiracy guys? And then he started going off on Alex Jones. And, I'm, and then I was like, hold on. You're the guy that's on the show trying to convince us that 
how the media depicts you isn't really who you are. So who are you? Why are you any better? And, you know, and I really didn't have an understanding of like the spiritual war that's going on. I do, you know, if you look up Lucius, and I'm sure this will get back to him. Lucian Greaves. Lucius Greaves' Luci real name. Lucian Greaves. Lucian Greaves' real name. Okay, it's he's not Lucius Greaves' real name. Uh, Douglas Mesner. And he is a, I got, and he is allegedly, we got to say, uh, a, a DNC uh, spot. He tries to fundraise for them. Allegedly, that's that's the word on the street. Allegedly, and Lucius, you could come on the show anytime you want if you want to uh, debate any of this. I am I'm your Huckleberry, okay? But mm. but so what what is being presented as Satanism, Doctor? Could that be different than what happens behind closed doors with this Malachian? Uh, Moloch and all this stuff because we we know that the Clinton Foundation has been and this is you know the Clinton uh, Foundation had five associates uh, in the year 2019 be uh, charged and taken to court on uh, child sex trafficking right uh, uh, we saw it and then early on in Haiti we saw that uh, that these things were going on um you know, Hillary, Hillary's daughter, Chelsea, who may or may not be Bill Clinton's daughter, we don't know, but that's a different <laughs> episode, has been seen with the cross upside down. Is that in your study uh, and research? Is a upside down cross a sign of, uh, let's just instead call it a uh, Satanism? Can we call it dark arts? Let's say I mean I don't know if that's if that's a clinically acceptable for you, but maybe not Satanism, but something in that realm or area. Well, so there's all kinds of flavors of quotes dark arts throughout history and many different cultures, right? Satanism is only one flavor or brand. But just back to Lucian Greaves for a second. So the Satanic Temple, their position is. We're not Satanists in the sense of we worship Satan. We're in favor of free speech, freedom of religion, alternative points of view, and we're just trying to like teach the public about that. And it's kind of sort of believable in theory. But then why do you want these statues of Baphomet and so on on college campuses? And so you're teaching who about what? Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, man. So, but that's not this multi generational Satanism. When you go on their website and you see pictures of they've done some book burnings of books that are false, the crazy therapy books, and you see some of the parties and you see what they're wearing, they sure look like they're kind of out there in the kinky gothic zone. <laughs> But that doesn't that that's not a crime, right? So no. I just think they're kind of an odd group of people who and I don't know why they're doing what they're doing for and I don't know if there's somebody behind them or what. And I don't really care. Okay. But I have been it sounds you know what it sounds like though, what he just said about the Satan it sounds a lot like Marina Abramovich, you know, which is you know, she does all these really the this dark imagery that she claims, like you know, that. is just just for effect. It's yes. theater. So, right. so okay. yeah, I understand. I'm starting to understand a little bit more about what you're saying. Uh, I have stated in the past that I 100% believe that this modern version of Satanism is, um, is a construct caused to cause div division and that it's a bunch of Dungeons and Dragons nerd dorks trying to impress fat goth chicks. Like, that's what I've always believed it is. And sorry about that, Doc, but I just, I got to be honest with you. That's really what I believe it is. And, uh, you know, we've had discussions on the show about Wicca, uh, you know, uh, you know, paganism, which I think has been somehow associated with modern day Satanism, which I believe is not the same thing. Uh, and that's my opinion. I, you know, I'm, I'm into God and spirituality and I think there has been a lot of work done to separate us from God. Um, right. but, but I want to, so 
Well, 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 you're, you're, and I, and I'm trying to really focus this because I, I think what you're trying to say is that you have found no proof that there is a family out there that is committing these crimes. That the that right. there is a, uh, there is in the name of Satan itself. Now, can we agree that based on some of our uh, uh, recent cases like uh, Utah, that there are sects of, let's say, Mormonism that have married children, committed rituals, cult leaders have committed these things that we have seen where they have they've uh, done uh, unspeakable things to children. Can we can is that something that you are open minded to or have done any research into? Well, I've, a little, but. That's not a question of belief, right? These things exist. They're, they've been prosecuted. There's videotape evidence. There's zillions of uh, corroborating witnesses and so on. So it's not, do I believe in that? It's like saying, do I believe in their supermarkets in the United States? Okay, I like that. I like that. So, so, so it really is just the term Satanism that you are saying that there is no one with that term that has done this in the name of that term? Is that what we're saying? Well, okay, so we're talking about Satanism. So obviously that word exists, right, in the language. Right. Uh, there's, like I said, there's clearly uh, groups that were called the Satanic Temple, for one example, um, that do some sort of uh, get-togethers where they do something or other. There's clearly teenagers who've kind of dabbled in Satanism and used some of the paraphernalia in the course of uh, rape and murder. That's all true. So there's, you have to always have to remember there's all these levels and variations within Satanism. I'm just talking about that high top of the pyramid uh, of the organized human sacrifice, multi-generational cults. That's what there's no evidence for. No okay. direct conclusive proof. See, okay, so I, I understand. But that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Okay, I got gotcha. you. I just, what I find that, because I, I think what you're saying is, is a very important thing. Because, again, I think that this, the, I think... For me personally, and I would be a real hypocrite if I didn't acknowledge this, is that I 100% believe that satanic panic was used to push against what is now coming out very openly, which is these global child sex trafficking rings. We know the finders were real. What did the finders represent and all that stuff. And so, so now we live in this world where we have like, you know, um, Lil Nas X and Sam Smith doing this very hacky take on Satanism in their acts and everyone's running around going crazy. And then the left is pushing back against that. This is satanic panic. And to me, I I think this is all astroturfed. Is am I at all close to what you're saying? Uh, well, so I believe that there's all kinds of disinformation, limited hangouts, cover ups. There's no doubt about that. Like when people say, "Oh, you're a conspiracy theorist. You think that the CIA is doing the following." First of all, I'm not particularly against the CIA as such. If they commit crimes, well, those are crimes. Uh, if they commit crimes against U.S. citizens on U.S. soil, that's definitely a crime. Uh, if they take out people in other countries for national security, then is that a crime? Or You can debate all that kind of stuff. But what's the job of the CIA? The job of the CIA is to conspire in secret and do stuff in secret. <laughs> I, you know what, do do doctor, do I just got to be honest with you. I, 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 I think it's so, in, you're a very interesting man because you, you basically agree on everything except for this connecting of these two dots, which is you, you, you believe that, 
uh, ritual stuff does happen. You believe that there is Satanism. You believe that there is there is uh, CIA uh, intelligence that that conspire, but you're not ready to sign off on that. There is Satanist, Satanic ritual abuse, gen- generational Satanic ritual abuse. Even though we do have uh, kind of have established that there are elites generationally. Have we have we established? That? I thought we kind of somewhat did. Generationally, have committed atrocities against children. Right, that's for sure. But your thing is that it it's just you can't prove it's been in the name of Satan. Right. And if somebody could prove it, I'd go, whoa, good job. Well done. Is it the exact word of Satan that you have the issue with or the, or the name Satan that you need it no. predominantly? Is it <laughs> things like Moloch? And, you know, I, I listen, dude, I mean, we can get it. I've been really starting to do some investigation into the to the occult, but like, like, you know, the whole thing where, um, one of the first movies shown at the white house was a movie about ball and right. what ball and the, and the ritual sacrifice that, you know, people like Ian Ferguson have come on and established that Malachians very much are into the dark arts and the hurting of children, but not it's not in the name of Satan that they do it, but in the name of Moloch. Does that mean anything to you? Well, it just means what I've been saying. There's really sicko groups of organized people who are very, very, very organized doing stuff in secret that involves all kinds of horror and abusing kids. And it's not the least bit unbelievable to me that there's been ritual sacrifices of children as part of that world. So it's not unbelievable. Uh, let's go to back to Jeffrey Epstein for a second. So I don't know for sure what those statues were, but they might have been statues of Moloch, who is the Egyptian, god of, Egyptian god of child sacrifice. So uh, at Bohemian oh, Grove. Oh, so hold on, hold on, hold on. So you do think there is a god of ritual sacrifice, Moloch? Or there is the belief there are people out there that believe that. Well, it's just like, do I believe that there was uh, ISIS, Osiris, Set in Egyptian religion? That's not a personal belief. That's just historical facts. Okay, so Moloch is a historical fact, in your opinion, that people worshipped him. That's what he said. So. Yeah, that's just like. Now that he existed. Uh, that mean it's a one day Moloch on Earth, right? Right, 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 right. Okay. So, but I want to go back to uh, this is directly to your connecting the dots here, the dots. Uh, so back to Jeffrey Epstein, Epstein Island, uh, Little St. James Island. We know that all kinds of people have been flying around in his airplane. The ones who've been questioned all go, oh, he's just on a business trip or whatever. Um, we know that the FBI went into little St. James Island and took a lot of stuff out of there. We know that the FBI went into his mansion in uh, Manhattan. We more or less know for sure, because lots of people have said, that there was a lot of videotaping of wealthy people having sex with underage girls inside that mansion. So probably the FBI has tons of evidence, you know, videotape objective evidence. Where is it? They're obviously yeah. sitting on it. Right? Where, yeah. where's, how come we know for a fact that all kinds of rich, powerful, wealthy guys were involved in sex trafficking? Was it to get dirt on them so he could control them? Who knows what the behind the scenes purpose was? But who's been charged with anything? Jeffrey Epstein and his girlfriend. What, what about all these other guys who are involved, who've been there? Where's the public investigation? How come nobody has been charged at all in this multinational organized sex trafficking ring? 
I feel like I can get you there, Doc. I feel like we can get you to go. There's some. I think you're saying it. I think you're really saying it. Yeah. He's well, the approach of a scientist, clearly. Yeah. I get. I get what he's saying. There's no, but there's no. You know, I mean, like, because the word Satan, right, and the word devil, they have. They're, they're not the name of the entity. It is a label. The 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 the, the deceiver. And it was right. it's one of the, the, so like the entity that is the evil in the Bible is not named. He the God does not name him in the Bible. Okay, right. so it's the deceiver. That's what the the en, I believe it's the enemy. Satan and devil is the enemy and the ce, deceiver. I believe. the adversary. So right. The saying, adversary. There we go. So you're saying there's no there's there's no name. He, the, you can't pinpoint the name. It could have been Moloch. It could have been Satan. I personally think it's Moloch. I mean, we've talked about this for a long time. That I believe that this is that they want you to like Lucius Greaves or whatever his name is. They want you to focus on him and not you know, like they almost took like Saturn worship, right? Kronos and all that stuff. The god, of, like again, like the doctor said. I think Moloch, Kronos, and Baal are all the same entity, and that involved sacrifice. Okay? That's my humble opinion. And the well, devil... Or, go on, doctor. Sorry. Nobody disputes that there was uh, Aztec sacrifices, right? Right. 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 So, I mean, I, I am with you on that. There's I, been organized religion-based run from the top down by powerful people ritual sacrifice of human beings that's just a fact well but it never happened in the united states what about when you hear like uh actors or rappers that say they they sold their soul to the devil and, or they sacrifice you hear about like kanye west sacrificed his mom and then he became oh, big yeah, those you, are interesting are, I, I know that's not down your your alley but what do you think about that is that is there any satanic to that yeah well, first of all, I don't think anything about that because I haven't studied it. Exactly. Respect. But, but how much of that is just theater, selling records, just sort of mental health craziness, being theatrical, being weird, being kinky? And then how far out does that go, right? All the way out to they actually literally worship Satan? Uh, I don't know. You talk about now that some of these groups in history have been highly organized. At what at what point in history, what's the highest point of organization you would concede that's possible for this for this group that's abusing people? W could you con con conceive of an international ring of, of abusers? Is that something you could conceive of? You don't have to conceive of it. It's a known objective fact that that exists. Now. Multi national organized billions of dollars revenue child sex trafficking. tell us about that well that's just a fact I right, but tell you <laughs> I mean tell you, how, how is it organized how, and, and and that's and you're saying that's separate from any kind of I won't even say religious but uh uh philosophical alignment it's 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 completely unrelated to that it's just child abuse for the sake of child abuse um no that's not what I'm saying Oh, please, uh, please clarify it then, please. Please. So for, forget about the religious part of it and the ideology. Okay. It's obviously a huge, big business, right? Child sex trafficking. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, of course. Child prostitution. That, everybody agrees that's a fact. It's not anybody's opinion. Lots of people are making lots and lots and lots and lots of money off of it. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's very organized by high-level business people. Is it? You can't debate that. Those are just clearly the facts. It's like saying, well, there's a lot of cocaine coming into America from South America. It's probably just a few guys on a farm, right? We know it's very organized, massive business enterprises that are doing that. Again, it's not debatable. But yeah, as you've seen suggested that suggests that it's it's mostly uh business motivations at, at the top of the organizations. Is that right? No, I'm just saying, what do we know for a fact? Okay. One of the motivations is making a lot of money. But you think that these people who do all this at the top of the pyramid, mm -hmm. they're not pedophiles? 
they're just businessmen. They just invested in that. I mean, you've got to be a pretty sick criminal pedophile to be running an international sex trafficking ring of children. Yeah. So how high, what's the top of the pyramid? Is the top of the pyramid at the White House, at the Department of hmm. Justice, you know, at Google Corporation, or the Rothschilds, or some people in Nepal? I don't have any idea. So, uh, I mean, on a whole different, like, a whole different country, what do you think about, like, when the cartel kills people for La Santa Muerte? Because they, they literally will sacrifice, and then, but that, there's proof there. Do you think there's any correlation there where maybe satanic panic got down to Mexico and is still lingering down there? Uh, well, first of all, again, I yeah. don't know for a fact. But when I was reading about this in the 90s, um, there was a University of Texas student who was in Matamoros. I'm pretty sure it was Matamoros. And he was killed, dismembered, boiled in a pot. And the police found that and a bunch of other bodies. And uh, But it was kind of blown off as uh, those cartel people. They're just statists. But there was a, a term in the local language, narco-satanistos. I mean, that was a known term. So there, there's some sort of satanic element in there to some degree, but I don't know how much. And what was what's their primary motivation? They probably have multiple primary motivations. Like I was just saying, money is obviously part of it. Power, all kinds of sex, and getting your hands on all kinds of women of uh, various ages down to girls. I mean, that's all part of it, right? Right. So let me ask you something. So I've often said that the the uh, initiation to the highest levels of power in on the globe is pedophilia. Like it right. is, it is the version of a. It's like the elite's version of a gang initiation, where you have to go kill somebody, and then so they have something on you, and you have something on them, and nobody's going to snitch on each other. So right. at these highest levels, they do this child. Uh, uh, sex rituals, uh, sometimes, uh, uh, sadly, and I hate even saying the words, but ends in the sacrifice of a child, which uh, is very hard for me to even to say. Um, do you believe that that initiation exists? Uh, I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if okay. that's the case. Okay. Okay. Nothing about that is unbelievable to me. Okay. But what, uh, okay, go on. So, I mean, you just look at the arms trade. Like, top people are making a lot of money off the war in Ukraine. That's just a fact. Biden goes, oh, here's 800 million worth of arms. Well, good. That's $800 million worth of sales for the uh, gun manufacturers or the, the plane manufacturers or whoever it is. Oh, good. Okay, we sold that hit a million. Let's have another war now. If you, in, It's just a fact that's in the public domain news that most of the weapons that the cartels are using in Mexico, they acquired from the United States, legally or illegally. But every one of those guns was manufactured and sold at a profit. So these are just facts. So, I mean, it's just an intro, because I, I understand what you're saying. I'm just, let's just say, sir, let's just, let's just get to the, let's just come out and ask it. Even though you believe that there is no concrete evidence which connects these, these children or these people and the trauma they've been through directly to Satanism, would you say, if you had to bet your life on it, <laughs> would there be a connection? It's hard to... I, uh, <laughs> I would say 
it's hard to believe that there isn't. But just like you just said, uh, you know, statement about pedophilia at the highest levels of government, and that's the initiation, and it could very well be true. So what's your evidence? I don't doubt it. I don't disbelieve it, but I'd like to know what's your evidence. And if there was some evidence that'd be in public, that'd be fantastic. I'd, I'd be, I don't know if I'd say I'd be overjoyed, but it'd be a very good thing if some of this organized high level satanic ritual abuse was actually proven, prosecuted, the people were convicted, you know, the the prosecutors stood in public and did news conferences saying, yeah, this was organized satanic ritual abuse. That'd be good. It's not good that it's happening, but it'd be very good that it was proven. All right. I understand what you're saying here. It's a very interesting conversation. Uh, so, so I, I just want to end on this. So you, you, you were, you were, you were meeting with, uh, we'll call them patients uh, people who said they suffered from these, um, from, from like uh, multiple personalities that they believe came to result from the results of trauma that they were saying uh, came from satanic ritual abuse. Now, when right. somebody comes to you and go, "Hey, man, I am be uh, I have multiple personalities because of a satanic ritual." My question to you is this: What was the, what research would you do in to seeing if that claim was true or not? None. It's not my job. I don't have the budget. I have no obligation to do that, and it's not the odds of finding something are zero. You know, within say I hire a private eye for five hundred dollars, what's he going to find? And it's not, this is what I started with. This is all about, is it real, not real? Do you believe, do you not believe? Which is endlessly where the focus is. But if you're working with somebody clinically, trying to help them recover and heal from depression, anxiety, PTSD, dissociative identity disorder, eating disorders, all kinds of stuff, back to therapeutic neutrality. So I'm, I don't spend, when I'm in a clinical mode, I'm not worrying about believing or not believing or what's the evidence or I'm not actively doubting people and I'm not actively saying, oh yeah, I know for a fact that happened. So I'll give you a quick example. So um, so I've got a thing called Trauma Model Therapy. That's one of my books and I do workshops about it. And one of the core aspects of it is the problem of attachment to the perpetrator which is you're a mammal, so you're biologically bonded to your caretakers who may or may not be your biological parents. It's true of foxes, rabbits, on and on and on and on. So you are genetically, biologically programmed to connect to, bond to, attach, love, and need to be loved and taken care of by your parents. For as human beings, that can be a lot of decades sometimes. <laughs> So it's not a choice. It's not about gender, culture, race, IQ. But then when you're, the people you love, who you depend on for your survival, are also abusing you verbally, emotionally, attacking each other, molesting you, you've got two act, you know, opposite alternating motions. Approach, love, attach, connect, and fear, hate, avoid, flee. But you can't flee because you're only four, five, six, seven, eight, ten, twelve. 10, 12. So you get this approach, avoid, love, hate, split kind of psychology going on inside. Now, let's say you've had like a regular incest family, and then on top, you've had satanic ritual abuse. Now I'm talking to this patient. She's in the hospital. It's June 13th, and she's actively suicidal, so she can't be discharged. And there's these cult alter personalities who say we belong to the cult and my dad is the head of the cult and I've got to be out of the hospital before June 21st so I could go to the ceremony. We're going to sacrifice more kids and I love Satan and Satan loves me. Okay, so then what do I do with that? 
what is my goal here? My goal is same as any mental health facility. Work with a person so they get to the point where they're not actively suicidal so they can be discharged. How am I going to accomplish that? Well, here's what I did in this situation. It's called talking through. So you talked through to the personalities in the background. They respond internally, and then the person out front tells you what they said. So, okay. Now, guys, I'm talking to these satanic cult alters who are male teenagers who got to get out of the hospital. So I go, okay, guys, let me explain to you how the mental health system works. You want to get out of the hospital so you can go to the ceremony. But we can't discharge her if she's actively suicidal. So if you want to get out, you got to stop harassing her and telling her to kill herself and telling her she's no good. Otherwise, you'll never make it to the ceremony on June 21st. Now, I haven't spilled the bad news to these parts yet because they don't know, you know, that dad died 10 years earlier. So there's no possibility of going to a cult ceremony with dad next week. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm forming a treatment relationship with these guys. I'm like their ally. I'm representing their point of view. And I'm just telling them how things work. And next thing you know, she's not suicidal anymore because the voices aren't telling her to kill herself anymore. And she's able to be discharged. So it's the same intervention, the same strategy. I don't have to decide if there really ever was a satanic ceremony. I don't have to decide if there's somebody else has picked it up and taken dad's position and there is going to be a murder on June 21st because it's the same intervention. I'm Then I talk to the out front person and I go, well, I know these guys are Satan. I know you're a Christian and uh, you don't believe in Satan and you don't practice human sacrifice. And I get that totally. But these guys, they're Satanists and they want to go to the cult and they want to kill babies, which obviously I'm not in favor of babies being killed. But let's just translate what they're saying into normal English for a second. What they're saying is, and forget all this satanic stuff and who, let's just translate into normal English. What they're saying is, I want to go spend time with dad and do stuff that he enjoys and have him be proud of me. How satanic does that sound? Where does your, you, you have some obligation, right? To, you know, if there's a threat of violence against someone else or, or, you know, Uh, suicide, where does that begin? How how do you, how do you parse that? The weird thing about the regulations and the ethics and the laws. So there's mandatory reporting. If I have, I don't have to know for sure. I just have to have, concern, strong worry that this particular child is in danger of being abused by this particular person. Mm -hmm. And then it's mandatory reporting. And I don't get in trouble if it turns out there's nothing going on. Those are the rules. This is not a mandatory reporting situation because I don't know the name of any specific child who's going to be at this ritual. I don't know where the ritual is going to take place. I don't even know what state it's going to be in. I don't know who's going to be there. There's nothing to report. And I can't, you can call up the police and say, I think there's going to be a cult ceremony somewhere. And you don't, just, and you're not, it's not, mm, what I say, your prerogative to, to drill down on that with the client. You're just there to, to, to treat them. That, that, is that right? Because I can't drill down. Drill down means what? Prove it? No, where, just, where, just to, how? I mean, to kind of investigate that through therapy. Is that, that's not really. Yeah, what have you really. done that where you've actually tried to investigate whether it was real or not? Uh, well, I've certainly asked people about details about where it happens, but it's almost always very vague. It's off in the okay. woods somewhere. I don't know really where exactly. Well, a lot, a lot of time it happened 30 years ago. Right. But even if it's supposedly ongoing, this is this in the fog sort of thing. Same with the individual person. You go, okay, okay, but what's the person's name? Okay, sometimes they'll tell you the name of their relative. Okay, can you tell me the name of some of these girls who've been killed? No, I don't know any of their names. They were runaways or, okay, so there's no identifiable victim. 
I've never gotten to, I'll give you one exception, but I've never gotten to, here is the location, here's the name of the perpetrator, here's the name of the victim. I've had people tell me that they have videotapes, but they're too scared to hand them over. So I never actually ever get my hands on anything concrete. But so back to this case example. So I say, you know, these guys just want to hang out with dad. And I think what they're, so I've just dropped the whole satanic part of it. And I'm normalizing it, bringing down to normal psychiatry, uh, not psychology. So you hold the, I hate my dad. He's a perpetrator. I don't want to ever see him again. They hold the positive attachment that's too upsetting, too conflicted, too painful for you. You can't admit it to yourself because how sick would I have to be to love my dad when he's my perpetrator? It's the same conflict and the same dynamic in just, quotes regular incest inside the family. And the point is that both these feelings are unavoidable. Loving your perpetrator is just normal mammalian attachment biology. It doesn't get stamped out no matter how much abuse there is. So these guys have been holding your attachment to your dad that you can't tolerate. Maybe they've been doing you a favor. Maybe you should talk to them. And then I might work with them to say, okay, how is it to your benefit to be a minion of Satan? And then you're going to get to kill people. And then how does this all work? And how, is so I start questioning their story and it always turns out there's somebody else in the background in their personality system who's really strong and powerful. And if they don't toe the line, they're going to get in trouble with that person on the inside. And then I want to start forming a relationship with the power broker on the inside. So that's kind of just giving you a flavor for how it all works and why I'm just off the topic of, is it real, not real? It's not my concern. It's interesting. That's exactly, that's exactly the same with quotes, regular incest. 90% of the time plus, the perpetrator's never been convicted. If you go interview the perpetrator and say, hey, did you uh, rape your daughter multiple times for years? They go, no. So well, you, got to, you got me. You got me. So the perpetrator saying no doesn't prove it did happen. The person saying it did happen doesn't prove it did happen. But I don't care. That's not my territory. I'm just working with the person on their beliefs that commonly they say it's my fault. I was a little this, that, and the other. I deserved it. So I work on the self-blame, self-hatred that comes from the abuse. I don't have to talk about the abuse itself that much. Because that's not the main target. Let's just say, Doc, that you find a connection. What does that do? Connection between, between Satanism and this abuse. Which abuse are we talking about now? The uh, torture, rape, murder of children. That somebody in there, they finally give you the smoking gun that... that has uh, eluded you for so long, and finally there is concrete proof that this is a satanic ritual abuse. What does that do? Does that well, like if I, change? So it can't be just hearsay, right? I have to have some videotape evidence or let's something. Say that, let's say you get it. Well, then I'd uh, probably call the FBI first, and I'd call the local field office of the FBI, and I'd say, hey, I need to talk to somebody, and I set up an appointment, and I'd make a copy or two of the videotape, uh, have them in different locations, so it can't just be, oh, we lost it. And I'd go in and say, here's the videotape, and then I'd hand it over to them. I can't be in control of whether they cover it up or they investigate it or they get shut down from above or what. Would it make you question every other situation that you thought they were maybe not lying but playing something in their head that didn't really happen i already think maybe they weren't lying and it did happen interesting it's a it's a quite an enigma very it's a big enigma. Yeah. and it's interesting 
Uh, and it's interesting. Jeff Harrison, just for a uh, microsecond here again, like it's not possible that all that evidence is sitting around and nobody's put a lid on it from top down. That's just not possible. That's my opinion. So there's got to be a whole lot of powerful people who've put the lid on all this Jeffrey Epstein network and who was involved. Well, you find the finders, they are, I mean, like we still haven't gotten the, uh, Jeffrey Epstein's client list like 100%, right? Have we gotten the exact list? Of who of who the kids got sold to? Like who they, who who's doing what? And, a bunch of fake versions of it going around. But, yeah, yeah, I mean, people get. I mean, I thought this comedian in uh, New York was a part of it. Now I don't believe she is. I believe it was somebody at the CDC with the same initials. So I mean, M Wolf. So that's my opinion. Well, one of my models is like, so you're asking who's running the show from the top, right? Whether it's individual or a group or an organization. And my take on that is. Well, if we've heard of them, that's not who it is. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Doctor, uh, Jeff Reps didn't kill himself, right? I, it's, so I, it's possible he did. It seems pretty doubtful. Okay. That's an answer I expected from you. It, is, it is interesting. <laughs> because look, like this is the most high-value prisoner they've ever had, right? Yeah. Who's known yeah. to be suicidal. Who's, we want to bring him to trial, and we just sort of go, oh, whoops. Yeah. We didn't have an eye on him for a while, and it was because these two guards were slacking off and eating pizza or something. Yeah, yeah. and the cameras didn't work. Yeah, Doctor, now uh, let me ask you something. In the feedback that you get from your book, do you, anyone ever get upset with you because they thought you were going to go one way with your beliefs, and, it, it, and then they – found out that actually you weren't going that way. Do you ever get feedback that maybe they got upset with you with that? You mean other than Lucian Greaves, right? Outside <laughs> Lucian Greaves, and which yeah. is we have an open door. You can come on Lucian's and we can discuss the validity of your satanic movement. Um, well, he would say it's not a satanic movement. We're just using the name Satan to make a point. Well, that's disingenuous to me. And that just proves why everyone thinks it is. It's just a bunch of nerd dorks well, me, trying to imp impress fat goth chicks. <laughs> well, it does impress a bunch of people. You so, I, 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 doctor, real quick, you don't work on campus, do you? On campus? No. Yeah, you're okay. So I could say that. I don't. I would have to edit it out so you don't get in trouble. Um, but, but hold on. Hold on. So. Um, no, we've lost our train of thought here. <laughs> no, no, I know where we are. We are uh, welcome to the Sam Tripoli show. Uh, we are uh, have people. My question, you. yeah, have you gotten oh, upset? Right, right. Have people gotten upset when they bought your book and then they realize afterwards, as they're reading it, that you you have a different take than maybe they were they thought the book was going to have, or maybe even hoping the book had had. Absolutely, from both sides. So in the nineties, on Amazon, there was one right after the other, two reviews of my Satanic Ritual Abuse book. One was attacking me, berating me, what a horrible person I am for personally spreading this epidemic of false memories. The next review was, what a horrible guy. He doesn't believe the survivors and the children. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> it's incredible, dude. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that usually means you're onto something. Uh, doctor, thank you so much for coming on. This has been a very, very interesting conversation. I could tell you that it was a, it was different than I thought it was going to be, and I and I like it. I'm glad that we have these conversations and that you uh you bring a different perspective to it. So I'm thankful that you came on the show. Thank you. One more time, can you tell us where the, where are can you tell our listeners where they can find you? Just search my name, Colin A. Ross, MD. Or rossinst.com, which is short for Ross Institute, trauma recovery inst.com. Yeah, there you are. All right, Doc. Thank you guys so much. Uh, if you guys, again, just go to samtriple.com, grabbing all my dates, uh, our affiliates, everything. Hang out for a uh, to hear some sneak peeks from upcoming shows. And uh, yeah, man, love you guys. Thank you so much. Anything else, guys? No, we good. Great episode. Great clip from Broken Sam at the end of this. Check it out. 
All right, guys, we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Have a great day. Here's a clip from the latest Broken Sim. Hey, Johnny. Hey, hey. Sam. Hey, man. Hey. Love the Broken Sim. Hey, we love you. Love the tin foil hat. And uh, I want to do an angel story. By the way, it's Dallas, Texas calling where all the hot progressive chicks live. We have got the hot progressive chicks here, Sam. I know you're, you're jealous, sir. Respect. Anyway, when I was a, a kid, I used to go over to my grandparents' uh, apartment in the summers, and there was a creek out back. And then it was a wet creek. It was always wet. Had a lot of concrete, you know, because it was Love in the a city, wet creek. too. One of those type of creeks. But it had a lot of mud, had a lot of cattails, and had a lot of crawfish. Love so crawfish. I go back there with uh, kite, kite string and bacon, uh-huh. and I go back there and catch um, crawdads. And if I catch enough of them, then my my grandpa would cook, cook up the crawdad tails for me. It's very kind like that. So anyway, so I go back there one evening. It's getting probably an hour before dark. I got to be about uh, 14 to 15 years old, something like that. Yeah. And I'm walking back there in the sticks stuff. I slid down the side of this concrete embankment to get down to where the mud and the good water was at. And right. all the thick cattails and everything. And I get down there and I look out in front of me about maybe 30 feet and standing in the thickest of the cattails in the mud is a little girl. What? And she's in this angelic white, real heavy white, but almost translucent dress. And her hair is so, it's the whitest white I had ever seen. And her eyes are this whitish pink. It was disturbing just to see her. I wasn't sure what I was seeing. Oh my god! Fourteen, fifteen years old. Fourteen, so I'm 15. looking at her. Not a, and I'm like looking a baby. around, and I'm just trying to get my bearings about me. I just can't understand what I'm seeing. And she looks at me and says, "Leave." I said, what? She said, "Leave." What? Well, leave now. I got out of there. Yeah. Fast. Yeah. I have no idea. I look back when I was up the concrete embankment, fixing to run up to my grandfather's apartment. She was there walking away. I, a little girl could have been, looks like she's five, six years old. Oh, shit. Um, I think she was wanting me a danger. I found out later there were kids getting hurt and, um, they found, they found a body. Next He's week. like 14 though, like enough to remember yeah. this. They found story, a body? The kid story. died. So he said. And I think she was telling me to get out of there. I think it was dang. Whoa, Johnny. That's him off right there. Isn't that crazy? That is crazy, bro. Call of the year for Call sure. Call of the year for sure. Write that Red, down on pink, something. Pink, pink eyed girl. girl pink eyed pink girls. Eye. Pink eyed fi- five year old. Johnny, we should clip these up, these good ones, and put them out. People I would never loved forget it. that. Yeah, yeah, we should. Yeah, you're right. I would never forget that. That Like that, that would. That changed my outlook on everything if I saw some creepy That's shit. like creepy, that. bro. My grandfather used to always tell us that there was, uh, you'd, you'd hear a baby crying in the cemetery not far from my house. What? At night, he would hear it, like, walking around there at night. So, I don't know, you know. I, that makes me sad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh. All right, that's it for calls. We're just going to move on to news now. Let's do it. News, news, news. So did you hear about this guy that entered this women's poker tournament in Florida and won? Yeah. Just to prove a point about yeah. I just, I just wanted to hit that really quickly because this uh actually maybe he got third place. Hold on. Dude, that dude, all these guys are doing it and it's so funny because it, But this is not even a sport. This is like a mental thing. Yeah. But it's still hilarious. It's still hilarious. It's, it makes me laugh every time. Yeah, David Hughes won a $250 buy-in, no-limit hold'em poker tournament in Hollywood, Florida over the weekend. Normally, that would not be noteworthy except for the fact that it was a ladies' event. Hughes entered the event at the Seminole Hard Rock Hotel and Casino and won the top prize of $5,555. Damn, Per dude. the Vegas Review Journal. Hughes beat out the rest of the entrants, all women, and drew the ire of other players in the process Abby Merck, who finished third in the event, that's what I was seeing here, tweeted out her frustration. Here, frustration. Here's what she said. 
got third in the ladies' event. Double exclamation marks. Didn't run well when it mattered. She's blaming her luck. Good game to all the ladies and to the man that won it. Don't do that again. That's what yeah, I get it. I'd be pissed too. I'd Here's be pissed too. And I'm not mad at him either. We have to make it so absurd. We have to make it so absurd that it forces people to go, okay, we got to stop this stupid shit. And here's a quick sneak peek of Conspiracy Social Club. Enjoy. In 1692, Haley put forth the idea of a hollow earth. He suggested the atmosphere separated uh, multiple shells and that each shell had its own magnetic poles with oh, each damn, sphere bro. rotating at a different speed. Let, let me let me Hold on. So you. the guy that was so smart, he could predict a comet to the minute, according yeah. to you. Yeah. And Sam was like, how do you do that? Well, Sam, math. <laughs> okay, math. But then the guy who's a master of math is wrong about hollow work. <laughs> oh, Sam. All right, guys, real quick before we're done, we want to tell you about all of our affiliates. It's a great way to support the show. Uh, as you know, uh, fiat money is chaos. Okay, fractional reserve banking, dangerous. The best way to get out of it is Precious metals, in particular, silver and gold, silver and gold. And that's why we're working at Wise Wolf, okay? Wise Wolf, silver and gold. Just go to samtriplee.com or samtriplee.gold, and you could join. And uh, the, he's hooking you up. They got great pro. They, you can either buy a single time or you can sign up for their program where you can buy up to $500 a month. I'm doing it. I hope you can, too. We also have... Everybody at Eagle Research, that's right, Eagle Research, AquaCure Mobile Model AC50 Brown Gas, Hydrogen Brown Gas. Uh, the guy who makes it says it's secure. People are using it. Check it out. Just go there, use the, the, the promo code Tin foil hat, three words, and get a discount. Go back to the main page, Sam Tripoli. You will get, uh, yeah, you get a discount with the promo code Tin foil. And then our good friends over at Haley Ray Crystal Go to the, the promo code is Swarm, Swarm 15, 15. Get 15% 15 off, off all your crystals, all your quartz, all uh, you name it. What do we got here? Look at all this stuff. All this stuff. All the best. You can do it right there. It's all part of the best crystal shop on the internet. Jewels, bracelets, clusters, you name it. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Candles. You name it. You got it. Swarm 15. Thank you for supporting the show. We love you. And uh, thank you so much for your support. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink. From the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Tim foil hack, tin foil hack, tin foil hack.